Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to continue with the Pi Zero project. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so a quick recap. If you remember last time, we got the Pi Zero uh, W basic configuration done, and then we installed the Hotspot and Hotspot tools, and then went ahead and tested the Hotspot to verify everything was working. Today, we're going to take a look at installing AX25, Pat Winlink, and connecting the MobiLink to the Pi Zero using Bluetooth. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Pi and get started. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to get AX25 installed. Now I'm going to be copying and pasting a lot of commands. I'll leave either these commands down in the description or I may put together a web page that has all of the commands in it and leave a link to the page down below. But everything will be uh, in the description below this video. First command is sudo apt hyphen git install space hyphen y space ax25 hyphen tools. Let's go ahead and press return and give that a couple of minutes to install. Once that finishes up, let's go ahead and clear that screen. The next thing I'm going to enter is call, and that's in all capital letters, equals, and I'm going to give it my call sign. Of course, you will want to give it your call sign here. This next command is going to be rather lengthy. Rather than calling everything out here and boring you guys to death, I will leave this command down in the description below. You just need to copy and paste this command in. All it's going to do is write some information to our AX ports file. We'll go ahead and press return, and it'll just dump you back out to the command prompt. Last but not least, we need to go ahead and uh, get ax25-apps installed. So sudo space apt-get space install space hyphen y space ax25-apps. Let's go ahead and press return and we'll give that a couple of minutes to install. And again, once that finishes up, I'm just going to go ahead and clear the screen. Now, the next thing we need to do is get a link for pat when link. So we'll come over to gitpat.io. Once you get to this web page, let's scroll down till we see the install button and click on it. And then we'll go ahead and click the download button. This will take us over to the GitHub page. And we're going to scroll down until we find the one for the Raspberry Pi. We're going to right click on that and say copy the link location. Now let's go ahead and head back over to the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to move to the downloads directory with cd space downloads. We'll press return. Then I'm going to use the wget command. So wget space and paste in that link that we just copied. takes that just a couple of seconds to download. Again, let's clear that screen and let's list out that directory. You'll see that we have uh, pat there and it's the .debian file. Let's run sudo dpkg space hyphen i space. We'll start typing that name, so just p-a-t, and then hit the tab key so it will auto complete. Let's go ahead and press return and give that a couple of seconds to install. Okay, after that is installed, we do need to go into the PAT configuration file and give it a couple of pieces of information. So I'm going to run PAT space configure. That's going to bring me into the configuration file. I'm going to come right here to where it says my call, and I want to type in my call sign between the quotation marks. Secure login password. You want to put your WinLink password right here. Then we're going to come down to the locator and I'm going to give it a six digit grid square. So in my case, EM65TV. Last change we need to make 
uh, is going to be the HTTP address. So I'm going to take out everything prior to that colon and I'm going to give it 0, 0.0 and my keyboard is not cooperating today. Let me hit cancel right there and let's try this again. Uh, 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 now, the last change I want to make is the 8080. <clears throat> and I just want to move this port number away from 8080. My intention is to use uh, a web server on here. And if I put a web server on here, I'm going to have to come in here later and move this port anyway. So uh, I'm going to use 5050. You can uh, use 5000. You can pretty much use whatever you want to. Uh, just don't use port 8080 because that will be the web server if you decide to run a web server in the future. But we'll just leave it as 5050 for right now. Let's go ahead and press Control S to save that information and Control X to get out. Now let's verify that we didn't make any mistakes because if you fat finger something inside that configuration file, Pat will never start for you. So I'm going to run pat space HTTP. And you should see that it's starting the HTTP service. You can see that uh, we have started that at this address here. As long as you get this line and you don't get any errors, you're good to go at this point. You can press control C to break out of that. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to set up pat to run as a system service. So we will do that with this command first. That's sudo space system ctl space start space pat at pi. And the pi here, right here at the very end, is your username. So if you're running something other than the default user of pi, you would want to change this to match. Let's go ahead and press return. And that should just dump us back out to the command prompt. Now, one other command that we need to run to finish this up is sudo system control enable pat at pi. Again, you want to change pi to match your username if you're running something other than the default. Once that finishes up, let's go ahead and reboot the pi because we want to, I'm going to type sudo space reboot. And what we want to do is we want to verify that pat does come up and is enabled on boot. Okay, after the Pi has had a chance to reboot, log back in, and we want to run PID OF space pat. And it should return a number. What number it returns is not important as long as it returns a number. What that's giving you is a process ID number of PAT. And this can change with each restart of the computer, or if you were to start PAT and restart it, it would get assigned a new number. So the number is not important as long as we have one. Okay, so now we come to the fun part, and that's connecting the MobiLink. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the MobiLink on, and you can see the fast flashing blue light. Now, let's enter a couple of commands over on the Pi. The first command we're going to enter is HCI tool scan. Go ahead and hit return, and that'll take a few seconds to scan. And then it should return the MAC address for the MobiLink TNC. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that and copy that information. It'll just make life a little bit easier going forward. The next command is sudo space Bluetooth CTL. We'll go ahead and hit return. And that's going to bring us into the Bluetooth control module. Let's go ahead with the next command and type scan. On. Now, this will also this will start scanning for nearby Bluetooth devices, and we should see the MobiLink TNC come up again in just a second. All right, and there it is. There's the MobiLink TNC2. Once we see that, we can proceed with the next command. So we're going to type pair, P-A-I-R, space, and we're going to paste in the MAC address that we copied a second ago. That's the MAC address of the MobiLink TNC. I'll go ahead and press return. 
and it says that it's attempting to pair. It's going to ask us for the PIN code. Now, I'm using the MobiLink TNC2, and the PIN code for it is 1234. I'll go ahead and hit return, and you'll see that this changed to MobiLink TNC2. And then in just a second, it's going to go back and just say Bluetooth. The next command we want to run is the trust command. So T-R-U-S-T -S space, and we're going to paste in that MAC address one more time. We'll go ahead and hit return, and it'll tell us that the trust succeeded. Once that's finished up, we can just run the quit command, and that'll dump us back out to the uh, command prompt for the Pi Zero. Now, if we look at the MobiLink TNC2 again, you can see that it's got a slow flash, or uh, slow flashing blue light, boy, that's a hard one to say, that indicates that we are paired up with the Raspberry Pi. Now, we don't have any usable services on it, but this at least gets it paired, so when we start running additional commands, everything works as it's supposed to. I went ahead and cleared the screen and then ran the HCI tool uh, space scan command again, and that just gave me the MAC address for the MobiLink TNC one more time. Uh, we need to run a few commands uh, here to get everything attached and ready to attempt to make the first connection. So I'll go ahead and paste in this next command. And that is sudo space rfcom space bind space forward slash dev forward slash rfcom zero space and the MAC address of the TNC. Now, keep in mind, I'm using a TNC2 and not a TNC3. If by chance you're using the TNC3, you'll want to give a space out here and give it an additional six. And the reason for that is the TNC3 does not use the standard channel, so we have to specify the channel there. Since I'm using the TNC2, I'm not going to put that out there. And I'll go ahead and just press return. The next command we're going to need is sudo space kissattach space forward slash dev forward slash rfcom zero space WL2K. And what this does is this attaches our RFCOM0 uh, to our AX, uh, AX port of WL2K. So I'll go ahead and press return on that. It'll let you know that it is bound to device AX0. Now, there is one more command here, and I'm a little up in the air on this one. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here for you uh, so you can see it. But it's sudo space kiss params, P-A-R-M-S. And uh, then we'll give it another space, hyphen C, 1, hyphen P, W-L-2-K. And obviously there's spaces between uh, each of these out here as well. Now, this sets some parameters uh, for the kiss attach. Without it, your first connection is almost guaranteed to fail. Uh, it definitely hangs for quite a long time. Uh, I say quite a long time. 20 to 30 seconds before it'll even attempt to make a connection. With it, it goes ahead and attempts to connect right away. Now, uh, when I say I'm up in the air on this command, with some of the gateways in my area, I can run this and it works perfect. And with others, uh, if I try to use this command, then I get a uh, end of file error from time to time. Not every time, but uh, occasionally I do get that end of file error. So I'm not exactly sure. I need to do a little bit more digging on that to figure out uh, more about this uh, setting these parameters here. So you may want to try it with and without both ways. Uh, but you go ahead and hit return there, and again, it would dump you out to the command prompt. At this point, you would go ahead and move over to Pat Winlink and use an AX25 connection. And you wouldn't specify any frequency uh, on the connect screen because we're not using any rig control. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you a connection. 
As of the time of this recording, the local gateway that I normally connect to over two meter packet is down. Uh, so not gonna be able to show you that, but this should give you enough information to go ahead and try connections in your area. Now, once you're done, uh, making your connection you do want to go ahead and kill these connections and it's fairly easy to do with sudo space kill all space kiss attach that'll go ahead and eliminate the kiss attach and then to stop the uh, rf com you'll use sudo space rf -M -M space release and gotta be able to spell it right and then we'll give it forward slash dev forward slash rf com zero. Go ahead and hit return there, and that goes ahead and uh, turns off the rf com connection. So there you go, guys. I uh, hope this helps point you in the right direction. I am still trying to work on some of the custom scripts and the custom PHP page. I thought I had made more progress than I had on that. Uh, doing a little bit of studying and a little bit of digging uh, with the way I'm calling things from the PHP page, uh, there is uh, a bit of a security issue there that I've got to work out before I'm willing to put that code out in a video. So that will be coming at some point in the future. I just need to find time to go back and try to fix that little security issue that we have and uh, get that perfected before I put the video out. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.